So today, we're going to take a look at a scenario where Germany forms an empire. Now this empire is going to be different than their previous empires. And I should also mention that the EU, NATO, and the UN, and other major alliances like that have all been dissolved. And Germany will probably be slightly buffed. And before we get into this scenario, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you are new. All support is greatly appreciated as we try to reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year. So yeah, let's get right into the scenario. So Germany is going to be a color of red. Anytime you see red in the video, it's going to be Germany. Now, where are they going to go first? There are a couple of stronger countries near them, such as France, Italy, or Poland. And they're probably not going to go after them since Germany isn't as strong as France. They're probably pretty equal with Poland and Italy is probably stronger too. But they do have some weaker countries around them, such as the Lowlands and Denmark. But they do have some claims that lie in other countries, such as in Poland, where there are claims or something like that, right? They're going to try and retake some of their old lands, and maybe even some new land. Their first move is to declare war on Denmark, which they are a lot stronger than, and should be able to push through pretty easily. They take out most of the southern areas, and they take out this island over here by Sweden, and they continue to push through the islands until eventually they take over the whole country, and of course they fully annex the country. But now, some of you might be thinking, what about Greenland? Because Denmark does still control Greenland, and, uh, well, Germany wants all the land they can get right now, so they will be taking Greenland. This, put, this puts them in a better position if they want to invade North America this time, or they can use it for resources and stuff like that. But now Germany has greatly increased their size, not by taking over this area, but just with Greenland alone. But now they have their eyes set over on the Benelux. They are going to go and declare war on all these countries. But one thing they didn't expect was France joining on their side. Because they claim most of Belgium and Luxembourg because, well, French, a lot of people here speak French. But Germany wants the Netherlands and Luxembourg. And so they're going to have to come up with a treaty with that. So, But none of these countries are that strong when compared to Germany or France. So... They're taking out pretty quickly. And now taking a look at this peace treaty, we see that Germany got all of the Netherlands and France got Belgium and Luxembourg. According to Google, Luxembourg has more French-speaking people than German, so... Well, now that Germany has expanded a little bit more north and western, they're now looking eastern and southern. They see Austria, who is pretty German, and uh, not that strong, and so they're going to go ahead and declare war on Austria. They push in, cut them off from their panhandle, and they begin to flood into the country, pushing towards their capital. Their panhandle is taken, and they spearhead in, and they capture Vienna. From there, the country surrenders, and they are fully annexed. So, for a few years, Germany is probably going to halt any farther expansion, as they try to recruit more troops, construct more artillery, and stuff like that. But during this time, they are going to declare war on Slovenia. That goes by quite fast. This isn't a very strong country, and Germany will fully annex them, and they now have access to the Adriatic Sea. But now, Germany has their sights on Eastern Europe. They send Poland an ultimatum, telling them that if they give them this land, then they won't invade them. But that's a lot of Poland, and Poland will not accept that. And so Germany declares war on them. With that, Germany begins to flood across the border and push up into northern Poland, and they make landings off the Baltic Sea. Eventually, these are all connected up, and they, and they meet up with the border of Kaliningrad. They continue to push down into Poland, but Poland does make a counteroffensive, and they cut off Germany from Germany. Germany is disconnected from Kaliningrad, and Poland almost completely pushes them out of northern Poland. We now actually see Czechia and Slovakia joining this war on the side of Poland, and they managed to make small gains in southern Germany, but nothing too large, as Germany is definitely stronger than them, and they, are, and they are fully kicked back. And then Germany begins to move into Czechia. This re-diversion of troops, though, does let Poland push back against the Germans, kicking them out fully out of northern Poland. But now we actually see Belarus and Russia joining this war on the side of Germany, as they want to take land from Poland. And this will bring Ukraine and the Baltic countries into the war on the side of Poland. Right away, we have Russia and Belarus meeting up in Poland and Lithuania, and Russia pushes down from Kaliningrad. Russia is taking a lot of land in eastern Ukraine, 
as their military is fully mobilized, and so they're doing a lot better than they are in real life. And Germany launches another offensive into Poland, and this goes really well, as Poland is now fighting a two-front war. Belarus and Russia begin to push into Poland at a greater state, and eventually Russia and Belarus capture the country's capital of Warsaw, and they continue to push into Ukraine and Lithuania. Russia begins to sweep through the Baltics, as Russia is a lot stronger than any of these countries. Ukraine does manage to push back against Russia, and their counteroffensive does go quite well, as they have liberated most of their country, and they begin to push into Belarus. Now we see Germany pushing into Slovakia, and Czechia has almost fully capitulated. Eventually Czechia surrenders, and now Poland has a much larger front line to worry about. Eventually Slovakia surrenders, and Germany is able to push into Ukraine, and into Poland. After a few more weeks of fighting, Poland does surrender, and all these countries are now going to make up a peace treaty. Okay, and so taking a look at this peace treaty, we can see that Germany got a lot of land out of Poland, they annexed all of Czechia, and they took over a lot of Slovakia. Belarus and Ukraine had a bit of a land swap, Russia took some of eastern Ukraine, and the Baltic countries were split between Belarus and Russia. Poland does still exist, and they still have their capital of Warsaw, which is about there. Germany went on to declare war on Liechtenstein, and uh, you can guess how that would go pretty quickly. <laughs> Germany could keep going down into the Baltics, and they probably will. But first, they're actually going to go after Iceland. Remember, they do have Greenland after they took over Denmark. And so now they're going to declare war on Iceland. And this country doesn't have any military, so once they take out all the populated areas in the west, and any coastal areas that could have any population, they just, the mountains surrender. And the country is fully annexed. And now one final country that Germany is going to declare war on is going to be Croatia. Well, with that, we have... Serbia joining on the side of Germany, and this will now start off an entire Baltic War. Bosnia joins on the side of Croatia, Montenegro on the side of Serbia, Kosovo, Albania, and Macedonia on the side of Croatia, and I'll just leave it at that, because that's just a lot. Of course, Bosnia has to go into civil war. So Germany begins to push into Croatia, as Germany is definitely a lot stronger than them, and they flood down into, into Bosnia and Herzegovina. And then Germany floods down and they take over all of the other blue team countries. Probably one of the quickest Baltic Wars ever. And now taking a look at this peace treaty, Germany took over all of Croatia and some of Bosnia, and then Serbia got the rest. I know Montenegro was on Serbia's team, but, but they just decided to reunite the Balkans. And so yeah, that is going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you are new. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know any other countries you want me to turn into empires or leave any other video suggestions below. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.